gang, Evan Sutton here. Today we're going to talk about contact. We're going to do a little resampling, a little slice to MIDI. So uh, get a pillow, get comfortable, hang out with me. Let's do this. All right, to get started here, I've taken the liberty of creating a little sequence. It's a little bass line that I made using an absinthe patch of my own. Let's take a listen. There it is. I've actually recorded it into a new audio track down here. In order to do that, you can just set your audio from to the track you want and just hit record. So now we have this as audio and we're gonna go ahead and take it into contact and we're gonna slice it up. We're gonna do all kinds of devious misdeeds with this piece of audio now. We're gonna kinda take lemons and make lemonade. So let's get a new instance of contact going. I have a track right here and I'll drag it on down. I'm gonna use contact five, but contact four will work just fine. And now I could use contacts browser to go ahead and look for this audio file, but actually a nice trick in Ableton Live is that I can right click on the region I wanna use and hit show in browser. And now if I go back to the instance of contact and create a new instrument, either by clicking files, new instrument, or just double clicking in the background, I can go on into the mapping editor and just drag this file in. Remember, the mapping editor is where we actually introduce audio into our instrument, okay? We're setting it up on particular keys and velocity zones. So I'm gonna grab this, drag it on in. I'm gonna put it on C2, and I'm just gonna map it to one key for now, so that when I hit C2, we're gonna hear this loop. Yada yada, you get the picture. I'm gonna go ahead and open the wave editor. The wave editor is where we actually deal with individual samples and we can make changes to those. In contact, uh, they call a sample that's mapped to the keyboard a zone. So you're gonna hear the word zone every now and then. So the other important thing to remember is that in order to see anything in the wave editor, you've gotta have something selected in the mapping editor. You gotta select a zone in order to see the sample. All right, now that we're inside of the wave editor, let's go ahead and see about slicing this thing. So I'm gonna to go to the sync slice tab. This is where we deal with all this stuff. And if we wanna beat sync this guy, we can go ahead and uh, use Time Machine Pro or Beat Machine. Time Machine Pro is going to uh, time stretch and Beat Machine is more appropriate for drums because it actually slices the loop up and doesn't change the duration in the same way. We're gonna make sure that the zone length is correct and in this case it is. This is an eight bar loop. This would be bars and this would be beats. And you can just double click if you wanna change anything. I'll hit eight and hit enter. And over here is where we're actually going to deal with slicing this thing up. The sync to MIDI clock area is for when we wanna have the loop that's already mapped to the keyboard uh, slow down and speed up according to the host BPM over here. But what we're actually gonna do is we're just gonna cut it up. So let's go over to the slices area. I'm gonna turn off auto find empty keys and uh, just set the map base key to a place that I think is appropriate. I like C3. And for those of you who may feel like this is a little bit quick, all we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this thing up into multiple rhythmic pieces and we're going to assign each of those little cuts to a different key so we can kind of play this thing back in a different way. You may be wondering, how do I tell the computer where I want it to cut? Well, that's where the grid comes in. I'm gonna turn the grid on, and you can see that right now we have it set to 1 16th. I'm gonna hit the minus key and pull it down to one quarter note, okay? And you can actually see, you can go ahead and count along if you want, and if you wanna just make sure that your slices are in the right place as it plays back. So I like where that is. I'm gonna have some nice little musical phrases to work with here. So in order to slice this thing up, I have to hit the drag MIDI to host button. And when I hit this, it's gonna do two things. First of all, it's going to slice the loop and assign all of these new little zones to keys in the C3 and C4 octaves. And then it's also gonna give me a MIDI region that I can drop into my host DAW and play back my loop in its original form using these new slices. Okay, so I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag and drop it in here. You can see it's got a little staircase going. I'll let go. It's gonna ask me if I wanna import the tempo and time signature data into the arrangement. It doesn't really matter in this case. I'm gonna say no, because in this case, it doesn't really matter since we're still within the same tempo uh, that the loop is in. But it's important to remember that that information does come along with the MIDI file that you drag. So we can see up here, we've got our new slices up here in the C3 and C4 octave. And as I hit a couple of keys,
you can hear that I've got these little musical phrases I can play back. And you can go through and you can play new melodies with this if you want. I've actually got one here that we'll use in a minute, but let's just listen to the loop in its original state and we'll watch it play back using this MIDI file that it spit out. If we look at this MIDI file in depth, we can see that it's actually just chromatic steps moving up through all of the keys that these slices are mapped to. So let's take a listen. I'll go ahead and solo this. You can see where the red mark is. It's showing which zone is playing at any given time. So we can use that if we want. I'm gonna go ahead and actually just get rid of it for the moment. It can be a nice thing to hang on to though. And let's go ahead and let's use this nice MIDI region that I created, which is actually playing a whole new melody using the material that we just sliced up. Let's take a listen. And there you have it. We have a whole new melody that we've created out of an old bass line because we cut it up into these little phrases. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to split these up and I'd like to put some different effects on some of the different zones that we're using. So as far as effects are concerned in contact, we have them in a few places. We have instrument insert effects, which affect the entire instrument. And we have send effects, which are sort of just like the sends that we have in Ableton Live. And the third place that we have effects is in the group insert effects. And if I go to the group editor, you will see all the groups that I have. Group one is this original sample. And group two is the slices that I have mapped. Now, the advantage that group insert effects gives us is that we can actually add different effects to different groups. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of these zones here, I'm gonna select them in the mapping editor, right click, and I'm gonna go ahead and click move each zone to its own group. Now once I do that, you'll see that I have all of these new groups in the group editor, and they're all split up in a way that now I can actually have different sets of group insert effects for each one of the different slices. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off edit all groups. What edit all groups does is it's actually a shortcut that you can use if you wanna do something that affects all of the groups. I'm gonna turn it off because the point of this is that we're mangling slices in different ways. So I'll close the mapping editor. It's kinda of just taking up room. And let's listen to this sequence. Let's find a couple of these slices that we wanna mess with. So let's go ahead with this one. Go ahead and find it on my keyboard. And the first thing I could do, I've got a little bit of a click at the end, so I could go ahead and right click on the volume knob and I wanna add an envelope. So I'll go to the envelope section, AHDSR, that stands for Attack, Hold, Decay, Sustain, Release. Go ahead and push the sustain all the way up, but let's pull the release down so it's a little softer. Oh, we could actually make the decay a little bit shorter with a lower sustain and we could use the hold to help us avoid that little click. There we go, I'm happy about that. So we did a nice practical modification first. Now, let's do something a little bit more, I don't know, risky. Let's go ahead and let's add a filter. I'm gonna go to band pass. Let's go to a four pole band pass. I'm gonna turn up the resonance a little bit, and I'll just right click on here and why don't we add an LFO? I'll go to sine wave. So this LFO is going a little bit too slow and the range is too big. I can actually adjust the range of modulation here. Oh, I actually, I, I kind of like the sound that that's making. Let's take a listen to it with the rest of the uh, slices that we have in this sequence. Okay, I like that very much, except it's a little bit jarring because it's kind of quiet. So let's go ahead and let's add some distortion. I'll go to effects and I'll go to lo-fi and let's pull down the sample rate a little bit so we can get some color on this thing. Maybe a little hair on the chest, you know? Yeah. Ooh, I like that very much. Yeah. Perfect, so now we have a slice that plays back. Yeah. 
Like that. Let's do another effect. Uh, let's do this one. Let's modulate the tuning here, shall we? Let's go ahead. I'll, I'm just going to go to envelopes, AHDSR. And what I'm actually going to do, I want to do a pitch dive, okay? So I'm going to turn this all the way up so that it's a full octave. This is the range of modulation. And I'll go ahead and I'm just going to make the attack a little bit lengthened, okay? What you can see is that right now, it's actually pushing the tuning upward, but I can go ahead and I can invert this control signal. And we can make it come back up using the decay. And let's go ahead and let's try a different sampler mode here. Maybe I'll use, uh, what will Tone Machine do? We'll turn off tracking so it doesn't affect the pitch too much. Ooh, that's nice, but let's tune the whole thing down an octave. That's pretty good. We'll turn the playback speed down a little bit so that we can lengthen this thing. Maybe another octave down would be nice. That's good, and I can go ahead and turn down smoothing, get it a little bit grittier. And if we want, we can have a little bit of movement on the formant. This is going to shift the spectral footprint of this thing. And let's make this a little faster. I can actually beat sync an LFO if I want by clicking where it says Hertz and just choosing a rhythmic subdivision. And just remember that if it says eight, it literally does mean eight sixteenth notes. So you have to make it so it says one to be a true sixteenth note. That might be a little fast, maybe two. There, yeah, that sounds pretty good. And let's just go ahead and add a saturator to push it a little harder. All right, let's listen to what we've got so far. Okay, so we've done two here. It's a good start. Uh, you guys can take it from here. Just remember that anything you want to modulate, you can right click on it. You can use an LFO. You can use an envelope. You can use external sources like MIDI and stuff like that. The choice is yours. Use your powers wisely. You never know how crazy this stuff can get. Let me go ahead and show you one cooking show style that I've already put together. We'll go to this instance of contact. I have a little drum loop that we can play along with it. And uh, I'll actually show you within contact here, we can turn on auto select group and select by MIDI. And so you can watch these group effects fly by as it plays. Let's take a listen. Here's the drum loop by itself. We'll listen to that first. Okay, now let's go ahead and listen with contact. So I hope you had fun with this today. Contact is just a giant playground of synthesis and resampling. I hope you have fun with this one. This is Evan Sutton, also known as Astrolith. You can catch me at astrolith.net. I'm the co-creator and the developer of the sound design and synthesis program here at DubSpot online and in New York City. Catch you next time. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and
make music. 